Welcome to the Green Wasp Removal YouTube channel. In this episode, we continue training and mentoring the Manchester University Wasp Survey Team on August 2nd, 2023, as we remove a bald-faced hornet nest from a tall tree using vacuum extraction gear, including pole pruners to cut the nest down and long vacuum extraction poles that allowed us to vacuum the adult wasps even if they're 25, 30 feet in the air. We then dissect the nest and examine the life stages inside the brood comb, from egg to larva to pupa to adult wasp. And then we collect the adult wasps for venom immunotherapy, or VIT, which we then take back to the lab and freeze in dry ice to preserve the venom. We'll show you the entire process from the initial nest removal to freezing the specimens. Thanks for riding along with us. We hope you enjoy the show. Let's take you back to August 2nd, 2023. August 2nd, 2023, the Manchester University WASP survey team is about to take down a Dolicovespula maculata nest right here in the tree. And this nest is quite active. There's a lot of foragers very agitated around it now because we've already done some exploring with the cameras up there and they are super ready for battle. So we're gonna cut it and drop it down and we're gonna vac up whatever we find in the nest and around the nest and we'll see how it goes. So here you see us training the team on how to use a pole pruner when you are removing a wasp nest at height. They have to stabilize the ladder very carefully. The main thing is to prevent accidents, first of all because working at height, we're up on top of ladders, we're extending tall poles up 20, 30 feet in the air. They're very heavy poles when they're that long. They're very hard to manipulate because they're very wobbly at that length. You wanna get above the branch that you actually wanna cut and then bring it back down until you hook the branch you want. And then you basically slide down the branch as close to the nest as you can get because it's less and less thick. The branch thins out as it gets closer to the nest and you want to cut the least amount of wood material because it gets very difficult to chop if it's too thick. Eventually you slide it down close enough to the nest, you find the thinnest part of the branch, and then you begin to apply pressure with the cutter. And hopefully you'll get it cut at that point and it'll start to drop. Now as you'll see here, the initial cut went pretty well. They cut the nest, it dropped the main branch, but there were a couple of small, tiny branches that went through the middle of the nest, which the wasps do on purpose to make better support for their nest. They build around several branches, thicker ones, thinner ones, and it's up to the team to cut the largest one first, see if that drops it. If it doesn't, then you continue with these smaller branches until it actually falls. Here we go. Ooh, that was close. Hey, close. Okay, back. All right, so here's our maculata nest. That's a beauty. Good job, guys. Now, there's probably not much left in there because most of them are right up here, uh, swarming, very confused, wondering what happened to their house. It's unlikely they will try to reset a nest there. It's very possible the queen is still in here. Yeah, there'll, uh, there'll be some inside, but for now we don't see a lot coming out. So what I'm gonna do is agitate it a little bit and see if you guys can back them up. Probably empty. Almost empty. There's a few hanging out for dear life, probably. What you're gonna do is keep your backs going. Anything that comes out, just suck it up as it happens. I'll be right back with the tool. Okay. 
not to damage any comb. You try to keep the paper in as large of pieces as possible. So cutting it right up from bottom to top. One note here, we'll freeze the frame for just a second. Take a look at this insect that just crawled out of the nest. This is an earwig. It's a natural predator of many different types of wasp nests. It will attempt to eat the eggs and the larvae inside the nest. So this might be something that you see inside any wasp nest that you might investigate. Paper removal in large sheets. I'm gonna stand up, Trey. You can. So I'm gonna raise it up a little bit for me. Yeah, I'm still good. Okay. All right. So here we have. You have a walk out on your glove if she can come out, just like you did with the yellow jacket. And see what we find. Usually there's a few campers in the little nooks and crannies, especially around the top. There's a lot of places they can hide up in here. So take it all the way down to the very cardboard cartony part of the back. Trying not to damage any of the comb structure. You see a couple pupating here right now on the nest, chewing their way out of the silk cap. Turn it around so I get a shot of the back there. Flip it right over. There you go. So if you look in here in these structures where there's a lot of space between, there's often places in there where they'll hide. And this structure here is covered in a lot of material. This would have been the very beginning build of the nest in this section right here. Want to like squish the bottom? Of it's it. okay. You can squish it up and break it up because there's no sheet you can get off of the top part. It's all going to be just crinkly. Here's an earwig. They love nests. I hate earwigs. Get out of my collection, buddy. A lot of people that say they don't like earwigs. Why is that? You know, I don't know. They're they're considered relatively beneficial, but man, when you have them in your house or you have them in your wasp nests, I don't like them. Yeah, there's a couple of brand new ones probably. Keep them right stable. You just use the tool to cut them out very gently. You're not aggressive at this point, most likely. So just try to. so the camera can see what we're going for. All right, so we have a couple adults hiding in the spaces up on the top back of the nest. We're going to have Trey cut those out. Uh, okay, what about there? Uh, 
first I cut one in half, not my intention. Adults in the in the pockets of that stuff. Here's one. Yeah, get rid of the earwigs, throw them right in the grass. Yep, you can cap off while you wait for a second. So in this clip, you can see a pretty good look at most of the life stages of the wasp in the nest. You can see some eggs, you can see some larvae, you can see some pupae, which are the white silk caps that are covered over. These cells have been given a silk cap by the larva themselves. When they're ready to pupate, they weave that silk cap over the top of their cell, and then they pupate, and then when they're done pupating, they chew their way out of that cell, and you'll see that here. So as you can see, there's a structure here on the inner rings and the outer rings of the lower part of it, it's probably all workers. Um, then you have newer comb, which may be reproductive males and queens sometimes, just depends on what stage they're at. Here you have one of the pupa coming out of a silk cap. And there'll be quite a few more of those over the coming days. So we'll put this into a captive environment in the lab and we'll allow them to pupate out. Uh, so that we can save them and use them for BIT. So if you watch the motions of the pupa that's chewing its way out, you can see it uses its mandibles to cut away the silk cap. And once that process is complete, it will crawl right out and it will join the others on the nest. Now, normally it would be enclosed inside the paper and it would stay inside that nest for a couple of days till it was strong enough to fly out and begin foraging for the nest. August 2nd, 2023, we just removed the maculata nest from the tree. We have, how many would you guess are in here? Adults that have been vacuumed up. Eight. Maybe eight adults that we found on the nest when it came down. All of the paper was peeled away. So the next part of this removal was just to get the extender poles onto the vacuum tubes. And these are vacuum poles. They actually are hollow inside and we can put the container on the top of the pole. And we can reach 20, 30 feet in the air with some of these poles. And this allows us to vacuum up many of the foragers that had left the nest during the cut down part of the process. And they, what they tend to do is cluster around the nearest branch where the nest used to be, which is what they were doing here. So we simply put the vacuum gear up high and keep it right next to where the nest was. And we'll end up vacuuming up a lot of those foragers as they return. And they'll start attacking the container itself out of defensive behavior. And when they do that, they get sucked up. How's it look? Good, you've, you've doubled it. You've got about... Hey, guys. So the specimens in there are mostly workers, and we may well have gotten the queen out of the nest itself. It's a little hard to tell right now. Right. Yeah, they congregate right back on, the, on the limb. Looks good, some more. A little bit more, not much, huh? You've got maybe 20. Okay. So the wasp we just took down, the uh, bull-faced hornet nest, uh, these little fellas can spray a venom instead of just inject you with it. This is another defense mechanism they have against predators trying to attack them and their nests. Yep, they spray venom into the eyes and faces of animals regularly for defense, and they'll do that with people as well. So when you are up close with a whole swarm of these, or even individually, if they're feeling threatened, you might see a venom spray. And what you see on this glass, which was previously clean, is sprayed venom, and that occurred when they had put this phone device up on a pole to get close-up imagery of the nest. So just interesting to see that. All of that is venom. And in fact, what they do with bee venom collection is they electrically stimulate a beehive 
to make them release venom on a glass just like this and then they scrape the glass and collect it in powder form when it's dried and that's how they retrieve some venom and we may look into trying to work that out uh, with wasps in the future too thanks so after the job we went ahead and froze these wasps in dry ice and we'll show you that process here these are just some of the containers we were using we used several containers on this job and each container uh, collected several of the different wasps that were either returning from the nest or were hiding inside the nest and so we ended up with dozens of wasps in these several containers here you're just going to see some of them being used to freeze the wasps so we keep about 50 pounds of dry ice in this 30 quart container which is a, just a heavy duty cooler and once you get your container opened up you scoop out some of the dry ice so that you can put it on top of the container and below the container you want ice on both sides of it that knocks out the wasps from the co2 gas and the cold and then they can be preserved for venom immunotherapy once they're frozen solid we take them back out of the dry ice and we transfer them into plastic bags which are marked with the species and the date and then we put them into long-term storage in a chest freezer So as the wasps come in from the field, we immediately freeze them each batch at a time. So you see just a little bit here that was taken from those two containers. The others are still to be frozen and brought into the dry ice. So it's a process throughout the day. As we collect more and more of them, we freeze them and process them and get them ready for long-term storage. And this process has continued with all the species we collect for venom immunotherapy throughout the entire season. At the end of the season, we package up everything we've collected for the year and we ship them to the west coast where they're processed by a venom collection company out there and they are then from there sent to biomedical labs in the states and also overseas in europe and these are for patients who need to be cured of lethal venom allergies so every single wasp that we collect in the field takes quite a journey and they're put to good use and they save people's lives all around the world thanks for watching have a good one